Hi. Hi. How's it going? Good. How was your drive? Good. I want to watch him, Mr. Beast. I was listening to an interview. Hey, it's like a nice grill out there. What's up, beautiful? Hi. How's it going? Good. I love our patio. Yeah, it's patio nice, right? Is so Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. My name is Beef Brody. We have so much to catch up on as it relates to Kendall. A lot of new information, a lot of decisions have made, and some curveballs have been thrown at us as well. Let's kind of get caught up a little bit. It's cold out here. All right, the last video that you guys saw about Kendall, we were waiting to hear back from Memorial Sloan Kettering in New York, and we were waiting to hear back from St. Jude about their sort of opinion of the next best step for Kendall based on all of those previous scans and tests and results, etc. And if you recall, uh, there's two spots in her liver that we're still dealing with and this giant lymph node conglomerate that has been deemed as like inoperable, non-resectable, etc. So we're still dealing with those couple of things. So once everybody had a chance to look at these scans, uh, there was there were some votes for going forward with radiation. There was votes for moving forward with a more traditional uh, chemotherapy type of option. And that didn't make it any easier because now you have like these two different things, which we continue to be faced with like these opposing thoughts and opinions. So without getting into like crazy detail in the whole conversation, what it boiled down to and what everyone sort of agreed on was that radiation was not the next best step for Kendall. Uh, and there's few reasons for that. One is that radiation has a hard time controlling neuroblastoma. It's a, it's a very difficult disease to control uh, and radiation doesn't do well with it to begin with, which is kind of part of the next point is that the amount of, of a dose that she can get, this is like the next couple of points. You can only get so much radiation dosage to your body in a lifetime and because she has so much active disease left, the dose of radiation that she's able to receive is unlikely to cure the amount of disease that is left. So we didn't want to use this kind of one shot at radiation now, knowing there's other potential options and other treatments that could help kill that disease, reduce that disease, etc., and then move on to trying radiation. Because once we do it, we can't really try it again later in the future. So. Everyone agreed that wasn't the next best step. Okay, sorry, it's getting, getting a little cold out there. So if uh, radiation isn't the next best step, then what is? And they laid out a bunch of options for us, and one of them was to continue the chemo immunotherapy that she had been doing, uh, that we've done I think four rounds of now, she hasn't had great response to it. She's had some, but not great. You guys have seen that. Another option would be to try a chemo and immunotherapy with a different antibody this time. Um, they suggested maybe this nuxidumab, which is basically 3F8 or HU3F8. And if you're familiar with neuroblastoma and you follow this stuff, you know that that's like a 3F8 is like this is a big, big thing that's talked about. The other option was to do um, another chemo treatment called ICE, and it's three different chemos. It's an acronym. ICE is an acronym. Uh, I can't remember the name of those chemo drugs, but that. And then another option was to do this copper sulfate, which is a newer treatment. I think she might have to get on a trial to try that, but it's, it's early. They don't have a lot of data on it, but they are seeing some good success with it. And then we got like the most curveball left field information I think we've could have gotten out of all of this. And that's the fact that through these conversations, like almost during the phone call, we got an email from MSK, Memorial Sloan Kettering in New York, from the surgeon saying, hey, I can remove that. The lymph node situation that everyone says is non-resectable, uh, I think I can do it. And we were like mind blown. We were both shocked and terrified with this information, as you might imagine. Here you've got three excellent surgeons telling you it can't be done, it's too dangerous, it's too risky, uh, it's very complicated, etc. And then you've got a guy 
coming out of nowhere saying, oh yeah, I can do that with so much confidence that you like question it, especially for the safety uh, of your child, right? So as you can imagine, Brandy and I were really not comfortable with the idea of doing surgery. Oh my gosh, the sun is in my eyes. Okay, that's better. Sorry, the sun was just like blasting me in the eyes. I don't mean to keep moving. Okay, so we have all of these decisions to make and the weight of the world was just on our shoulders. It's like, it felt like it was up to us. Like, here's all this information. What do you guys want to do? And it like, it wasn't stressful at all. Uh, no, but seriously, it was like super stressful and um, we don't feel qualified at all to make these decisions. And it's not, I'm not saying that they were making us make the decisions, just what it felt like. Um, I think they were looking to us to say, what are you guys comfortable with? Here's our suggestions. Now, I did get to speak with the surgeon and he couldn't have been more generous with his time. Um, I spoke to him for like a solid hour and he made me feel so much better uh, about the thought of doing a surgery. And uh, it's not like he had some big ego, you know, that I was expecting to hear like, oh, this guy thinks he's some sort of superhero and he can just do anything. That wasn't the case at all. He explained uh, in great detail the way he approaches a surgery and how it's very different from how others approach the surgery and that he only does these complex cases that uh, other people can't do and he's just gotten so good at it over the years that that's almost all he does now. He told me he does about, he does like two to three of these a week of these complex ones and he's like, I don't even do the easy stuff. Everyone else does the easy stuff and I tend to only get the difficult stuff that no one else can do. And if you look him up online, Dr. Gerstel is his name. He is known for doing surgeries that no one else can do. And people refer to him as an angel and a miracle worker and all sorts of things. So I felt a lot better knowing more about him, his approach to the procedure, and the rest of the team involved because it's not just him. There's a, quite a few surgeons. There's uh, other teams in there making sure that everything goes as smooth and perfect as possible. Ooh-wee! What do you think about this bed, Kendall? I love it. Yeah? What's your favorite part so far? The mattress is super comfy. Yeah? And it's lower to the ground. And it's not just a couch. It's a bed, too. Yeah. It's you got anything in your bed. little cubbies over here yet? Um, no, not yet. Well, I did have little bears in it, though. Well, here's a little Hans. Oh, yeah, I can put him right here. I'm sure before the end of the week, you'll have that sucker filled up with stuff. Uh-huh, definitely. <laughs> so, with all that information, we have decided to proceed with doing the surgery. It terrifies us. It freaks us out. But several of these doctors have agreed that they're concerned that Kendall's disease wouldn't be curable without doing this procedure. I even got a phone call from our other surgeon that did the, the, the other couple operations on her, on her saying he thought it was absolutely the right call to do this procedure uh, if he felt confident and capable and all those sorts of things. So that was really awesome of him to say, hey, I, you know, I think you're making the right decision here. But we've got some scheduling stuff to sort out and it's going to be a little while before she can get in for surgery. We've got to get through Christmas and New Year's and scheduling the logistics and when they can get her in in New York and those sorts of things. So we've got to buy ourselves some time. Kendall hasn't had a treatment in two months, which is really scary, quite honestly. This disease is aggressive. She's got high risk neuroblastoma. Uh, it's a more aggressive mutation of it and it has the potential to come back and spread pretty rapidly. So two months without a treatment is like kind of, kind of pushing it. So that's what we're here to do now. Uh, we are going to do the chemo immunotherapy with a different antibody, the 3F8. Uh, it's an outpatient procedure, so uh, that's why we're here on the RV. We're like 20 minutes from the hospital here. We will go each day into the hospital. Uh, it's five days. Day one, two, three, four, and five, she will get chemo, two different chemos, and then days one, three, and five, she will get the immunotherapy infusion, and those last first time is an hour, the third, the second and third times are 30 minutes. Uh, they're supposed to be a little bit more intense from what we understand. We're hoping maybe she tolerates it a little bit better than the other immunotherapy because that wasn't fun at all either. So anyways, that's kind of the quick update. Uh, 
I appreciate you guys more than you know. You know, you guys continue to send messages on Instagram and uh, you find your way to me in places that are asking about Kendall that I couldn't have imagined some of you would seek out to ask about her. Um, I do my best to make posts here on YouTube in the little community tab. We, I try to make posts if there's not going to be a video. I know some of you see that. YouTube doesn't really push it to everybody, unfortunately. Um, but she's been doing so good the last two months of no treatments. She has been just awesome, feeling great, uh, having fun, like really doing well. Oh, and, and she's eating like anything and everything. She's eating whatever she wants, pizza, burger, like she's just eating whatever she wants. We do put her on the feeding pump at night just to continue to get some calories in her. So she is up like eight or 10 pounds and uh, she's just doing really, really well. So but that's it. Thank you guys so much for all of your love and support. If I don't see you guys before Christmas, I hope you have a Merry Christmas. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.